Our first um, presenter is Gregory Watson. Gregory's a Biostats PhD student. He's expected to graduate in 2017. And the topic of his entry is Big Data for Big Impact, How Corporate Analytics Can Revolutionize the Fielding School of Public Health. Please welcome Gregory. As a representative of the biostatistics department, it should come as no surprise that I'm going to talk about big data. At the Fielding School of Public Health, we have a big mission, benefiting humanity by improving the health of populations worldwide. If we take that mission seriously, if we truly want to maximize our impact on public health, we need the insight that can only be gained from comprehensive data analytics. Let me begin with two examples from other industries. First, the 2012 Obama presidential campaign. The Obama campaign had one goal, 270 electoral votes. And the key to those votes was reaching undecided voters in battleground states. They knew this meant they had to do five things, recruit volunteers, raise money, register voters, persuade voters, and get out the vote. But how? Were all five equally important? They had a resource allocation problem. How could they allocate their resources to gain the greatest number of votes? That's where the analytics team came in. They analyzed vast amounts of data, including voter surveys, uh, voting records, and even the TV shows people recorded. This allowed them to predict the persuadability of every single potential voter in the country. Then, they individually targeted the voters most persuadable with the outreach method most likely to convince them. The campaign constantly tested methods of persuading voters and soliciting donations, comparing everything from email subject lines to the style of the donate button on the website. In this experiment, they tried different subject lines on small groups of voters which allowed them to send their entire email list, the one predicted to generate the most donations. The Obama campaign ended up winning 332 electoral votes. More impressively, they won nine of the 10 closely contested states, the states that mattered most, an achievement unparalleled since at least World War II. Second example, the 2002 Oakland A's. <laughs> a low-budget Major League Baseball team trying to compete with rich teams like the New York Yankees and our own beloved Dodgers. Their objective was to assemble a team as good as the Yankees for much less money. So they turned to analytics, defying traditional baseball culture in which players were subjectively evaluated by scouts. They analyzed historical data to identify the player characteristics most important for winning, especially those like on-base percentage, which were undervalued by other teams, and those like stolen bases, which were overvalued. In the end, the 2002 A's won 103 games, tying the Yankees for the most in baseball. This included a 20-game win streak, the longest win streak by any team in nearly 80 years. Their success is obvious. Lots of wins, small payroll. Here's the same plot for last year, same story. At the Fielding School of Public Health, our objective is maximum impact on public health, and our primary tools are research, education, and service. That's what we do. We conduct research and offer, we conduct research and offer service in a wide variety of public health related fields. We educate students, training them to be leaders and public health professionals. We clearly do these things well, but we can do better. We can be more effective in our service, and we can focus on the research most important for improving public health, 
analytics gives us the tools to allocate our resources for maximum impact. So specifically, what can we do? We can analyze the public health impact of current and past students and faculty. This will tell us the characteristics of successful, or rather, impactful members of the school. Those are the applicants we should accept and the faculty we should hire. Similarly, we should evaluate curricula and degree programs on how well they translate into alumni who benefit the public's health. We could develop a public health impact factor for journals. Academic journals are often ranked by their impact factor. But what if we rank them by their public health impact rather than their academic impact? Then we could identify and promote the research most important for public health. This is the tip of the iceberg and an important opportunity. Once we recognize we're faced with a resource allocation problem and embrace analytics as the solution, we'll be well on our way to maximizing our impact.